Chapter 606, Confiding What Was Inside the Heart Facing this particular question made Mu Weining flustered. She didn't just like Tang Xiao. It was far more than that, and it couldn't just be described by the only word, love. She wanted to reveal what was inside her heart to Tang Xiao's grandmother, yet she restrained herself and reserved the embarrassment and pride inside her, causing her face to blush. I, she opened her mouth, but the words seemed to be blocked inside her throat. Qin Changyue's expression, in particular, was very serious, and she looked at Mu Weining's expression before saying with all seriousness, Weining, behaving with restraint is all good and the correct thing to do, but if your lifelong important matter were to be delayed because of it, then it's not worth gain for the losses you'll have. If you do like our family's show, then tell it seriously to Grandma, since Grandma believes that he's not a child without a heart. Mu Weining recalled the many female friends Tang Xiao had. She was conscious that she had a lot of love rivals out there, and courage suddenly sprung up inside her heart as she gently nodded and said, I do like him. The serious expression on Qin Changyue's face melted, as a smile climbed up on her apparently young face. Then, she held Mu Weining's hand and said with a satisfied expression, It's good that you like him, therefore Grandma will take care of you well. I will not spare that brat if he dares to bully you. Despite feeling touched inside, yet Mu Weining still said, Thank you, Grandma, but I don't want to force him. Besides, he just began his studies this year, so it's still too early. Let us get along well slowly first, then I will rely on myself to fight for it. Please don't give him pressure, Grandma. Qin Changyue's lit up, she really appreciated Mu Weining now. Then, she nodded and said, Don't worry. Grandma won't pressure him, but I can't just stand by doing nothing. Besides, Grandma has a clear idea of what should be done. As dusk came, Tang Xiao returned to the Tang family's ancestral home. What he didn't expect was that nearly all members of the Tang family in Beijing were there. Even his uncle, Tang Yunpeng, who just happened to return to the capital, was sitting on the sofa in the living room hall all smiling. You are, Tang Xiao looked as Mu Weining hurriedly stood up from the sofa. There was restless and uneasy expression on her face. He also looked at the rest of his family members with smiling faces, and a bad feeling suddenly appeared in his heart. With a blossoming smile on her face, Qin Changyu waved at Tang Xiao and said, Good grandson, come to grandma. Tang Xiao walked to her and asked, did some accident happen in our family? How come so many people are here today? Grandson, Grandma heard that the matter regarding your relationship with Mu Weining was exposed in the club today, is that right? What? Though he could guess that everyone coming here was probably related to Mu Weining, yet how could he lay it bare like that? It was evident that the address Mu Weining used to call him finally made everyone misunderstood it. He wanted to explain but he was afraid that Mu Weining would be embarrassed, so he could only smile wryly and replied, Grandma, there shouldn't be a need to make everyone gather and open a meeting just because of an issue regarding young people's relationship, right? Silly brat, we, as the elders of the family, must pay attention to the relationships of our younger generation, to begin with. The face of the Tang family as a whole will be directly affected by the wife you will marry in the future. This child, Weining, is very good and remarkably outstanding. Grandma really likes her and so does everyone, said Qin Chongyu. I am fucked. Finally, Tang Xiao exploded inside. Xiao, Grandma wouldn't call everybody here if the relationship between the two of you was not exposed to others. But the hard fact is that you can be sure that it won't take long for all the social circles in the capital to know the news that Wei Ying is your girlfriend. Even if you don't care about yourself, don't you have to consider her innocence as a girl and her family, said Qin Changyu. Grandma isn't what you said is too, too exaggerated. Tang Xiao forced a wry smile. How come it will affect toward the innocence of a woman? What you said is just the way it is, Xiao, said Qin Changyu with all seriousness. With our family's background, all the family members treat sentiments and feelings between lovers as something important. 
If the news that the little princess of the Moo house is your girlfriend has been exposed to outsiders, then she will be labeled as being tied to our Tang family and everyone else will regard and treat her as someone from the Tang family. Now, you tell me, who will marry her if she doesn't marry you in the future? Isn't it possible for you to find a new lower and then wouldn't everyone think that you dumped her? And at that time, will she even be capable of facing others? I. Tang Xiao was struck dumb. This problem was out of his consideration before, and he suddenly realized that what his grandmother said was correct. But, they were, after all, only a fake couple. If this was a setup arranged to force the two of them to be together and, granted he himself didn't think that it matters, how could Mu Weining's family still be willing to accept it? Tang Guisheng stooped up with a happy expression, as he waved his hand and said, Who among the descendants of the Tang family is fickle and irresponsible? Since Xiao and Wei Ning are lovers, they shall never be separated in the future as well. Besides, younger generations will do all right on their own. Let them develop slowly first and, after everything ripen or so they think, then this old man will personally visit the Mu family to propose marriage and hold a wedding. All right, dinner should have been prepared, so let us all have a meal first. Proposing marriage? Hold a wedding. Cold sweat streamed down all over Tang Xiao's body. He looked at Mu Weining, who was blushing and had her head lowered. If he didn't hesitate and care about Mu Weining's face, drowned by discomfiture and distress as he was now, he really wanted to shout loudly to everyone, We are fake lovers. As dinner commenced, the dishes were sumptuous, and yet Tang Xiao didn't have any appetite. On the contrary, Mu Weining, who became a distinguished guest of the family, ate a lot, being cared and cherished by everyone. It was so much so that Tang Ying, who was also at the table, felt sour inside, as she occasionally raised her head and rolled her eyes at Tang Xiao. It's none of my goddamn business, to begin with. You eat what you sow. Tang Xiao also glared back to retaliate at her once in a while as well as suppressed his temper and forced himself to finish the meal. After seeing that his grandma was about to pull Mu Weining to chat again, he hurriedly made an excuse and said that Mu Weining still had things to tend to this evening, and took her quickly to leave the Tang family's residence. Huff. Tang Xiao heaved a deep sigh of relief the moment they stepped out of the residence's entrance. I'm sorry. Mu Weining's expression was a bit complex as she softly spoke with her head down. Tang Xiao looked at her face and secretly sighed inside. He couldn't blame Mu Weining at all. Let alone that today's incident was in fact not her fault, but everything was because of Tang Ying. Forget it, you don't need to worry. Tang Xiao waved his hand and then spoke after they got in the car. It's getting late. I'll send you back home. All right. Mu Weining nodded gently. Oriental Rose Garden, a high-class residential complex in Beijing. Following Mu Weining's guidance, Tang Xiao stopped the car in the underground garage. Instead of rushing to talk, he opened the window and lit a cigarette. He took two deep puffs before speaking, Weining, my situation is quite complicated, for I was once badly scarred and wounded by this very sentiment in the past. I never thought neither do I have the intention to start a new relationship until this scar is healed completely. What occurred between us is just a strange combination of circumstances that happen to turn into this situation, and I'm sorry if this matter has an impact on your reputation. Mu Weining was shaken inside. Despite having suspected that Tang Xiao had been plagued by sentimental problems in the past, to think that he was really that hurt was out of her imagination. She really couldn't figure out what blind woman had the heart to hurt such an outstanding man. Tang Xiao, it's I who must say sorry. If it wasn't because of me, today won't be. Tang Xiao waved his hand and said, it's all right. What you did back then is nothing to be said against. It's understandable since we are a couple, albeit a fake one. Since they have misconstrued it, then let them misunderstand it. If anything, I haven't considered to ever involve myself in feelings, affections, and sentiments for the next few years. 
In case that you also don't want to fall in love for the time being, then let us continue act this way. Don't let others' misunderstanding disturb us. Mu Weining's was bit loss as she replied, okay. Her expression wasn't noticed by Tang Xiao as he continued, what happened today is bound to be spread out and be heard by your family. If they ask you and you want to explain it, then please do. If you don't want to, then call me. I know that the news that we are lovers will inevitably affect your reputation. If you still haven't found the right man a few years later while you and I are also still single, then we'll carry on to tie the marriage, and that's it. Gazing at Tang Xiao for a long while without speaking, Mu Weining then firmly said, Then I'll marry you if you haven't yet married at that time. What? Tang Xiao was taken aback. Despite knowing nothing about who hurt you so deeply, I'm willing to heal the wound in your heart with the love I have for you. And I believe I can do it, said Mu Weining softly. You, Tang Xiao was struck dumb and tongue-tied. Mu Weining forced out a bitter smile and said, I couldn't do anything about it since I feel that I've already fallen in love with you. I originally wanted to act with restraint and reserve it as much as possible and let you speak out what you have in your heart first. But I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'll never be able to wait, since waiting is not even an option. You're too outstanding, and there are so many remarkable girls around you as well. As a matter of fact, I have already explained to your grandmother that us being a couple is nothing but a fake relationship. But she. Tang Xiao was silent. If only Xue Qingcheng didn't exist, if only he didn't experience the life in the immortal world for 10,000 years, he would have been attracted by Mu Weining and even fall in love with her. But now, the wound in his heart made him afraid, constraining him to not to want to pour out his feeling too prematurely. He had never thought about feelings and affections so seriously in the past, yet at present, it was a must. However, just as he began to think about it, he felt somewhat depressed. First of all, it went without saying that there was Han Qingwu, Xue Qingcheng from his previous life, and Ouyang Lulu, who was trying to pursue him desperately. And then there was Kong Xia, whom he had given his body to. He was already at his wit's end and now Mu Weining was added to the line. For a moment, Tang Xiao's mind was disconcerted as his thoughts whirled about. Anyways, I'm going back. I need to rest early. As the second cigarette was burned through, he then turned to look at Mu Weining. Mu Weining hesitated for a moment before speaking, would you like to go up? I live alone here. No, a Tang Xiao shook his head. I'm going back to Star City tonight since there are some things in the magnificent Tang Corporation I need to tend to. All right. Pay attention to your safety on the way there. Mu Weining nodded silently, yet her face was dark and gloomy. Chapter 607, Welfare House Tang Xiao originally wanted to stay in the capital for a few more days while waiting for the confirmation from the Virus Research Institute that the infectious disease was completely solved before returning to Star City. However, he finally decided to leave tonight since he didn't feel like explaining the misunderstanding to his family members. After making a few phone calls, Tang Xiao drove back to Star City overnight. He was stumped for words when he returned to Southgate Town however, as he found that his parents were not resting yet. They were now chatting in the living room in their pajamas. Sunny, are you in love? It was two in the morning, but Su Lingyun didn't look like she was sleepy at all and came to welcome him with a joyful expression instead. The news flew this quickly? Scratching the back of his head, Tang Xiao could only reply with a helpless expression, Mom, Mu Weining and I are only fake lovers. She happened to have many male students pursuing her, whereas your son was also pursued by a lot of female students. And therefore we thought it over and decided to be a fake couple just to deter those pursuers. Fake couple? The revelation made Su Lingyun and Tang Yunda struck dumb. The very reason they weren't asleep yet was that they learned that their son was returning back from Beijing. They were full of expectations and were waiting due to the news they were told by others, but little did they expect that it was actually false news. In a flash, Su Lingyun seemed as though a deflated balloon as she sat back on the sofa, looking dispirited and downcast. 
She then yawned and said, Son, I heard that this girl called Mu Wanying is quite outstanding. But even so, pretense may turn into a reality if you work hard on it. Well, I'm bit sleepy now. I'm going to sleep. Tang Yunda shot Tang Xiao a ruminating look before shaking his head and turning to walk to their room. Continuing with the pretense may become reality? While looking at the back of his parents, a depressed feeling filled Tang Xiao's heart. Then, he went to the second floor, took a bath and changed his clothes into new pajamas and went to sleep in his comfy bed. A few hours later, he woke up and had his spirit recovered and full of energy, following which he washed and began to cultivate. His present cultivation level had now reached the peak level of the viscera transformation stage and had his internal organs been tempered. They were now thousands of times stronger than that of an ordinary person's. He was now only a little away from the blood and qi circulation stage, and only after he reached this stage would he be able to conjure more profound magical spells easily. Nevertheless, he was conscious of the fact that haste would make waste. It would be very difficult to break through to a higher stage for the next few years. The reason being that him being able to reach his cultivation level at present was caused by too many fortuitous encounters. However, he didn't feel a need to rush it either, for every high-rise building started with its foundation first. The last layer of the first stage of his cultivation, the star's tyrannical body realm, was to condense his chi into nine cores phase forming, yet it was but only a foundation stage for the heavenly art of cosmic genesis. His cultivation in the later stages would be more stable only if he laid out a robust foundation. It had been more than half a year since he returned from the immortal world, yet he was able to achieve his current state. His cultivation was indeed progressing by leaps and bounds. Therefore, on the premise that there was no huge fortuitous encounter, he would need to suppress this progress rate even if the situation was possible and allowed him to have a breakthrough. Huff. After expelling out a foul breath, Tang Xiao slowly opened his eyes. Southgate Town may have a beautiful environment, yet it was still located in the city, and the concentration of spiritual qi here was in no way compared with the Walled Hill Villages, let alone the Nine Dragons Islands. Without a rich concentration of spiritual qi as the medium, the degree of energy absorption from the stars was weakened by several points. Tang Xiao got out of his bed and opened the curtain. Big flakes of snow were unexpectedly falling down outside. Star City was neither located in the south nor did it belong to the north region, and only had a little snow whenever New Year was over. Yet it unexpectedly snowed, though there were still a few days away from the New Year's. Moreover, heavy snowing like today was a rare sight in Star City. The outside world was shrouded in white. Even the plum blossoms which were proudly blossoming were covered with white snow, shrouding its gorgeousness. There was hardly any resident walking through the falling snowflakes, but a lot of security guards and employees from the property management office were sweeping the snow on the concrete road, in the villa area. Long Shueyao? Tang Xiao's gaze landed on a tall girl. He immediately remembered his promise to treat her to dinner for her help in obtaining his driver license. It was a very long time ago, and yet he hadn't fulfilled this promise. A few minutes later, Tang Xiao was neatly dressed. In order to not attract attention, he disguised himself by putting on a down coat, which he didn't know when his mother bought him, and then walked outside. Back when he was in the immortal world, Tang Xiao had seen the world of ice and snow, so he wasn't that disturbed nor did he care about the heavy falling snow at present. After greeting the security guards he knew well, Tang Xiao came to Long Xueyao's front. He watched as she cleaned the snow with a shovel and then said with a smile, I'll help you. Long Xueyao stood up and immediately smiled upon seeing Tang Xiao, you're a busy man, Mr. Tang. I haven't seen you for a long time. Are you on vacation from college? Tang Xiao took over the iron shovel from her before nodding and smiling. Yeah. I just returned to Star City last night. Never thought it would be snowing heavily today, though. It's great that you came back yesterday. Long Xueyao smiled. It wouldn't be easy for you to come back if the heavy snow had closed up the road. 
Indeed. Tang Shou smiled. Anyways, how about I treat you to lunch this noon, provided that you have nothing to do by then, that is. Stunned for a moment, Long Xueyao immediately smiled and said, How come you are treating me to lunch all of sudden? While shoveling snow, Tang Xiao replied, Back when I got my driver's license, I said that I would treat you to a meal. Many things happened and delayed me, though. It just so happened that Long Zheng Yu called me on the way back yesterday. He learned that I was gonna come back and invited me to a meal. Hence, I want to invite you too. Never mind with the driving license matter. You don't need to worry about that. Long Xueyao shook her head while letting out a faint smile. It was not my merit that it went smoothly, to begin with. Anyhow, I won't join in the fun in the men's gathering, though. Besides, I'm afraid I won't be able to go out since there are things I need to tend to at noon today. Ah, since you have things to do, then how about some other day? Tang Xiao nodded and asked. Long Xueyao gently nodded in response. Suddenly, she seemed to recall something and then said, Are you guys going to have a drink and a meal and then hang around at night? If I remember correctly, Long Zhengyu played mahjong with his friends last night. I'm afraid it will probably be very difficult for him to get up this noon, right? How do you know he played mahjong all night? Asked Tang Xiao, surprised. Did you forget we're relatives? Asked Long Xueyao with a smile. We had dinner together last night. He told me at that time. Tang Xiao suddenly understood. Long Zhengyu and Long Xueyao were cousins, so it was nothing special for ones of the same family to have dinner together. After pondering, he then replied, I'll look for him in the evening, then. If so, how about going to a certain place with me at noon? Asked Long Xueyao with a smile. Where to? Asked Tang Xiao with a puzzled expression. You'll know when you go with me, said Long Xueyao. Anyways, let's finish this first. Tang Xiao smiled in response. He didn't think much about her keeping him guessing. Besides, he just came back and didn't have many things to tend to, whereas following her to have look at what exactly it was wouldn't make him stay at home and got unceasing, nagging from his parents about a man and woman relationship issues at the very least. As an hour passed, the snowing reduced a bit and Tang Xiao returned home to have breakfast. After spending two hours reading a book in the study room, he got a call from Long Xueyao. The villa complex was filled with a lot of people now compared to the deserted and cold scene in the morning. Not only were there teenagers, even their parents were accompanying them to play, throwing snowballs and making snowmen. It's still ten in the morning. Why go so early? As Tang Xiao came to the front of the property management office's building, he asked Long Xueyao who stood in front of an SUV. There are some things I need to buy. Long Xueyao slightly nodded. I guess it will be noon when I get everything. What are you going to buy, exactly? Asked Tang Xiao. Are Yang going to pay whatever I buy today, by chance? Asked her with a smile. Tang Xiao couldn't help laughing and replied, if what you want to buy can make up for the meal, then no problem. That's a promise then, said Long Xueyao with a bit self-satisfied smile. Immediately after, the duo drove to the nearby shopping malls. What made Tang Xiao feel strange was that he could tell that Long Xueyao had clearly noticed the staff in the stores in advance, for the purchase of 20 to 30 sets of down jackets with a lot of shoes and socks. All of which were for children under 10 years of age. Xueyao, are we going to the welfare house, by chance? asked Tang Xiao after pushing the trolley with the help of the store staff, and then the duo finally moved everything. I knew I couldn't hide it from you. Long Xueyao smilingly said. We are indeed going to the welfare house. Furthermore, this welfare house is in the worst condition in the entire star city. Tang Xiao nodded without speaking. In fact, he was also very supportive of visit and doing charity to the welfare house. Many children who had lost their loved ones were very pitiful, to begin with. 
supposing that the welfare of the said welfare house was really poor, they would be facing and enduring hard times in the dead of winter. Blue Star Welfare House It was the most dilapidated welfare house located in the suburbs of Star City, and only had six staffs to manage it including its head, whose leg was crippled due to a fall a few years ago. The other five were responsible for buying groceries, cooking, and their daily needs. The welfare house itself adopted 32 children, and four of them were less than a year old. At the gate of the welfare house, where the snow fell gently, the head of the welfare house, Wu Xiufin held a broken umbrella and waited near a dilapidated sign. She received a phone call from Long Shueyo yesterday and therefore kept coming to the gate since this morning. She had been waiting for more than an hour and came out dozens of times. Creek The SUV stopped at the gate to the welfare house and Long Shueyao and Tang Xiao came out from the car. Long Shueyao walked toward Wu Xiaofin and looked at her lips that had turned slightly purple and then said with concern, Dean Wu, why did you come out? The weather is cold and snowing. It's all right. I'm wearing thick clothes replied Wu Xiaofin. The clothes she wore were very thick and she was a bit plump. But some padded cotton on the shoulder of her wadded jacket were exposed. The needlework on it was obviously broken, while there were also several stitches on some other places. As for her feet, she only wore worn, unpadded shoes. Tang Xiao, who stood at the side, secretly sighed inside. Long Xiaoye told him on the way here about the situation in the Blue Star Welfare House, so he learned that this welfare house was only funded by a few people out of their good intentions, while the aid from the government was close to nothing. Chapter 608 Taking the Actions One is Capable of With the introduction from Long Xueyao, Tang Xiao briefly acquainted himself with Wu Xiaofen. Then, he sat back on the driver's seat and watched as the two women entered the welfare house before he started the car and drove it slowly inside. Blue Star Welfare House was worn out and its infrastructure was in bad condition. There were several swings in the courtyard, but they could only be used for children to play. The small building was only two stories high and many of its windows were plastered with newspaper. There were even two windows replaced by plastic sheets. Oh. Tang Xiao's vision suddenly focused on one spot. He keenly saw a boy in the corridor downstairs. The boy was holding a small wooden stick and quietly stood beside the concrete pillar. He seemed to watch the drifting snowy world outside, yet there was no expression in his eyes whatsoever. There were signs of frostbite and some red blood stains on his face. He extended his other empty small hand to the outside as if he wanted to catch the falling snow from the sky. Tang Xiao parked the SUV in front of the building. He didn't immediately rush to help Long Xueyao and Wu Xiaofin to move the things inside but walked towards that boy instead. Who are you? The boy didn't look back. You can't see anything? Asked Tang Xiao with slightly wrinkled brows. The boy let out a smile that covered all of his frosted face and said, Who says I can't see? I know that it's snowing now, and I'm also conscious that you came to me. Yes, there was a car sound before. It seems that it's anti Shueyo car since its sound is similar to the car she drove here last time. Anyways, did you come with anti Shueyo? Tang Xiao nodded and suddenly remembered this boy's situation, and then quickly said, That's right. I came with your anti Shueyo. We brought some clothes and daily necessities for you here. Little guy, aren't you feeling cold here? Why don't you go back to the house? It's indeed pretty cold here, but I want to make myself more clear-headed, said the boy while shaking his head. You what? Tang Xiao was confused by this boy's reply. Wanting to sober up more? What does it mean? Tang Xiao asked in puzzlement, but the boy didn't immediately answer him and instead, took his wooden stick and went to the snowy yard. There, he stretched his arms wide, opened his mouth and took a deep breath before saying aloud, My mom told me before that I don't need to see many things with these eyes of mine, for I can see them with my heart. With my whole being still and my heart tranquil, then the time shall not move. 
I can see the sky, the people, and see some other things when I enter this tranquil state. I can see what others can see, just like now. Having said that, he gently lifted the wooden stick. Though his hand was quivering a little due to the cold weather, the hand that held the stick was unexpectedly firm and stable. This illogical scene made Tang Xiao's pupils shrink. He could clearly see that this boy used the tip of the stick to easily catch the largest snowflake in front of him. That's correct, it's the largest snowflake. With his keen eyesight, Tang Xiao could quickly judge with a glance. What's your name? You can call me Little Blind. It's what everyone calls me, answered the boy. Tang Xiao was silent for a moment before asking again, How old are you, exactly? The boy thought for a while before answering, I should be fifteen? Hmm. That's right. I turned blind when I was eight and have been living in this welfare house for seven years. So, I should be fifteen now. Fifteen years old? Is he joking me? Tang Xiao observed the boy in front of him, who looked to be around seven or eight years old. It was hard to believe that the boy was already fifteen years old. In an instant after, Tang Xiao blinked and grabbed his wrist the moment the boy's ears moved. Blood interpolation pulse and qi interpolation bone? Tang Xiao looked at the boy with a disbelieving expression and his heartbeat accelerated. He had met too many existences with special constitutions from the numerous races he had encountered in the past, and yet he never met someone with such condition like this boy among them. Nevertheless, he had once read an ancient record, blood interpolation pulse never dies, qi interpolation bones never perishes. A permafrost physique that is extremely difficult to encounter in billions of years. Then this boy has a permafrost physique? The record he once read noted that the permafrost physique only appeared among a certain type of girls, but now it unexpectedly appeared in the body of a living boy in the present era. This strange situation made him somewhat at a loss. Uncle, are you on fire or something? The boy suddenly asked. Tang Xiao's lips squirmed a few times and asked back, Why do you ask that? It's because you're very warm, said Little Blind. It's like when I was near a bonfire, it feels very comfortable. Also, I can feel that the amount of blood flowing through my blood vessels is a bit bigger than usual. Tang Xiao was taken aback and astounded, you can hear the sound of the blood flowing in your own blood vessels? Yeah, Little Blind replied with a smile. Not only can I hear the flowing blood inside my blood vessels, but also the friction of my bones, too. That's right, what I hear most clearly is the sound of my own heart. It's like the sound of a drum being beaten, and sometimes it's so loud that I can't even sleep. Suddenly, he seemed to remember something and the smile on his face retreated. A sad expression replaced it as he shook his head and said, You don't believe me, do you, uncle? It's because they don't believe it either, and neither does the dean, Grandma Wu. Tang Xiao's expression was complicated as he looked at Little Blind, as countless thoughts sprung up inside his mind. After a long period of time, he heard a cry of from Long Xiaoya from the distant corridor and then looked at Little Blind and spoke, in the case that. Say, if I'm willing to adopt you and take you out of this place, are you willing to follow me? But why do you want to adopt me? Asked Little Blind back. It's not because I pity you. That's not it, said Tang Xiao. It's because I think you are a good seed and you might possibly become a very powerful person in the future if I train you well. Little Blind shook his head and smilingly said, I won't reject it. Because a day more I stay here is an extra day of burden I will give Grandma Wu as well as the uncles and aunts here. However, I hold no wishes or thoughts of becoming a great person in the future, though. I just want to see more things, and I want to be able to be of help to Grand Wu. I just examined your eyes, and I can't cure it with my Chinese medical expertise. Western medical doctors will find it very difficult to cure it, too, said Tang Xiao. But if you really follow me, I assure you that you can see everything in the future, not with your eyes, but with your heart. You see, I'm just like you since I can see a lot of things even if I close my eyes. Really? 
Little Blind was taken aback. Really? Tang Xiao nodded. My ability is limited at present, since I can only see the surrounding area within the radius of 300 to 400 meters if I close my eyes. Further than that is still out of my perception. However, I'm sure that I can see much further when I become stronger. And perhaps someday, just a thought of mine is enough to see something hundreds of thousands of miles away. Are you talking about the heavenly eyes, uncle? Asked Little Blind curiously. Do you know something about the heavenly eyes? Asked Tang Xiao, puzzled. Grandma Wu told me that monks can open their heavenly eyes, said Little Blind with a smile. Ah, uh, right. I once saw the Erlangshan's journey to the West on TV in the past. He can open his heavenly eye, his third eye. Tang Xiao couldn't help but laugh. He didn't explain anything but picked him up instead. While walking inside, he said, I can make you able to look further and a lot better than the heavenly eyes in the future. Please don't talk to me like I'm a toddler, uncle, said Little Blind with a smile. I'm fifteen already, and the words you spoke are just like coaxing a child, you know. Oh. I can smell Auntie Shueyo's fragrance in front of me. Long Shueyo indeed appeared in front of Tang Xiao and Little Blind. Her expression looked a bit complicated with compassion, sympathy, pity, and worry. She touched Little Blind's forehead gently while speaking, Little Hanin, why were you disobedient again? It's so cold outside and everyone else is staying inside, why did you run to the outside? Have a look at your little face, you got a frostbite. Auntie Shueyao said Little Blind with a smile. I may have gotten a frostbite, but I won't get sick. Did you forget that I slept in the snow for a night yet didn't get sick the next day? Long Shueyao snappily said, Little Brat, you became more disobedient, you know that? If you dare to run to the outside again, Auntie Shueyao won't come to see you again. Little Blind then pointed to Tang Xiao and said, Auntie, this uncle said that he wants to adopt me. Long Shueyao stared blankly and quickly shifted her eyes to look at Tang Xiao and inquired what happened. This little guy and me are kindred spirits, so I like him very much, explained Tang Xiao. He will only become a burden for everyone else if he keeps staying here, so I'll take him with me. Also, I will donate 2 million yuan to the Blue Star Welfare House and find a construction team to repair it when the spring comes. Then I'll purchase a number of daily necessities, desks, chairs, and books, as well as figure out some way to invite or hire a few teachers to come here teach the children. For real. Long Shueyao exclaimed with a pleasantly surprised expression. An emperor won't joke over this matter and his words are to be taken seriously, said Tang Xiao. Pfft. Long Shueyao couldn't help laughing and then smilingly said, when did you become an emperor, eh? Anyways, I'll hold on to your words. I will spit on your face whenever I see you again in the future if you don't keep them. Tang Xiao let out a faint smile and felt that he should do more. Following which, a bright smiling face suddenly emerged inside his mind. Tian Xiaoming? After putting down Little Blind, Tang Xiao took out his mobile and dialed the cell number of the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital's president, Li Hongji. After the latter accepted his call, he directly spoke, Presidently, there was a girl who secretly took a footage of me when I gave medical services in the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, during the National Day holiday back then, and then uploaded it to the internet. Her name is Tian Xiaoming, and she seems to be an anchor of a live broadcast on the internet. Could you help me find her contact number? No problem. Wait for my good news, replied Li Hongji with a smile. Anyways, you should have returned to Star City, right? When will you come again to the hospital and render medical service? I'll be there in a few days. Said Tang Xiao. But this time you must not disclose the news that I'm going to give medical service, so as to avoid the same situation occurring again like during the National Day. Got that. Li Hongji consented without much deliberation. After concluding the call, Tang Xiao caught sight of Dean Wu walking lamely from the inside. 
he knew what to do. Though what he could do was not much, he was willing to give everything he had within the limits of his ability. Chapter 609, Before the Live Broadcast The disabled, in some aspects, had a will far above that of an ordinary person's. The most appropriate word to describe it was that they were physically disabled yet mentally firm. From his contact with Little Blind, Tang Xiao could tell that the darkness in front of him didn't wear his will away, even causing him to adapt to that darkness instead. He was like an unyielding pine that stood proudly amidst the cold winter of the snowy world. Dean Wu, I would like to adopt this child, said Tang Xiao straightforwardly after greeting her. Dean Wu turned a bit dazed, and there was a complicated look in her eyes. It had been seven years since she became Little Blind's half-mother. When the world just lost all its color to him, she was the one who cared for him and helped him pass through the pain. She was the person who helped with the funeral arrangement of his parents after a traffic accident claimed their lives. In all due honesty, Dean Wu was truly happy that Tang Xiao wanted to adopt him, yet there was unwillingness deep down inside her. May I know the reason, Mr. Tang? After all, Henin is, Dean Wu hesitated. There are two reasons, said Tang Xiao with all seriousness. First of all, I like him. I can't see any sign of depression in him at all, and I even can feel that he is mentally optimistic instead. Secondly, a Chinese medical doctor is one of the many identities I have, so I want to take him with me and try to treat his eyes with all the expertise I have in the arts of healing. Dean Wu's eyes stared wide, along with a burst of joy and excitement within. Her lips trembled and she hurriedly asked, Can, can you really cure Han In's eyes, Mr. Tang? I don't have 100% assurance, but I believe it'd be for the best if he followed me than staying here, said Tang Xiao. Of course, that would also be on the premise that I have your consent. I'm willing. Of course, I give my consent, said Dean Wu without hesitation. If you can make Han In regain his sight, it's fine even if I have to take my eyes out to give them to him. Since I have your consent, please rest assured, Dean Wu. I will treat him as my own younger brother. Tang Xiao smiled. Furthermore, I just learned from Long Shuiao about the situation your welfare house is currently in, so I decided to donate 2 million yuan in the hopes that it can solve some of the problems you have here. Adding to that, I'll also find a construction team to help renovate your welfare house when the spring comes next year and also look for a few teachers to teach the children knowledge and culture. His pledge made Dean Wu's body freeze. She could hardly believe what she heard. For countless times she fantasized that some good rich person would donate to her welfare house. But after all, imagining was akin to illusion, as many years had passed by and her wish never came true. Fortunately, there were some kind-hearted people, such as Long Xueyao, who were willing to extend their hands and frequently sent some money, clothes, and daily necessities. 2 million yuan. With such amount of money, the living conditions of the children in the welfare house would definitely be improved greatly. At the very least, they wouldn't have to wear those stitched and patched clothes anymore. No longer would they only have meat every couple of days and gone was the scene where they had to burn charcoal stoves during the cold winter season. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tang. Dean Wu wiped the tears off the corner of her eyes and bent her waist while holding on to her walking stick. Tang Xiao promptly held her and said, Dean Wu, there was a sentence that I noted deeply during the Great Flood period in the past. When difficulties arise in one place, aid comes from everywhere. What I'm doing is just what I can do, you don't have to thank at all since it's just me wanting to help the children here. The snow was falling in the cold winter, and yet warmness filled Dean Wu's heart at this moment. What Tang Xiao said touched her. Just as she asked Tang Xiao and Long Xueyao to enter the house, Tang Xiao received a call from Li Hongji, who then gave him Tian Xiaoming's cell number. Xueyao, go inside with Dean Wu ahead of me. I'm going to make a phone call first, said Tang Xiao before turning around. Star City, Castellan El Garden neighborhood. Wearing cartoon-styled pajamas, Tian Xiaomeng was sitting on the balcony of her house in boredom. 
As the hanging basket kept swaying, her eyes watched the gentle falling snow outside with faint expectation painted on her face. Ever since she aired the live report about Tang Xiao, she had become a popular anchor on the live broadcast platform. And just the number of her hardcore fans now had surpassed 100,000, while hundreds of thousands of viewers visited her live broadcast channel every day. It could be said that both fame and fortune came to her since then, though there were also some bad things nonetheless. For instance, she often met her fans in real life whenever she appeared in public. Some of them would find her, asking to take photos together as a memento as well as sign to them. Alas, becoming a celebrity sure is not easy. I want to go out play with snow, but I'm afraid I'll attract attention. Most of the people in this neighborhood already know me, so should I go to another place and buy a house just like what I have discussed with mom and dad the other day? Tian Xiaomeng drowned in her thoughts while holding up her chin. I'm a star, I'm a big star. The ringtone of her mobile phone suddenly sounding startled her so much that she almost jumped. She picked up the mobile in a hurry and looked at the number displayed on the screen. It was an unfamiliar number from this city. Hi, hello, Tian Xiaoming speaking. Hello, I'm Tang Xiao. Can you please do me a favor? Tang Xiao? I don't know if you've made a mistake. Ah! I beg your pardon? What did you just say your name was? Just as Tian Xiaomeng was about to say that she didn't know the caller, a handsome face suddenly appeared in her head and she exclaimed out loudly immediately after. It's Tang Xiao. The voice replied again. Tian Xiaomeng jumped down from the hanging basket. Her eyes sparkled with excitement as she asked in a hurry, Are you the young divine doctor of Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, Divine Dr. Tang? That's right, it's me, said Tang Xiao with a chuckle. Tian Xiaomeng was so excited that she spoke incoherently, T Tang. Divine Dr. Tang, you. Ah, hi. I'm your loyal little fan. Just, just call me, call me little Meng Meng. Oh, I'm so excited. Am I dreaming? How come I got a call from my biggest idol? Let's not joke, shall we, Tian Xiaoming? Tang Xiao chuckled. There's something I need your help with. Do you have some time to spare now? While suppressing the excitement inside, Tian Xiaoming immediately replied, I surely have time for my idol. I'll squeeze time even if I don't have it. Tell me what do you want me to do? I'm willing to do it. As a matter of fact, I'm now in Star City in a certain welfare house, said Tang Xiao with a smile. The condition of the place is very poor though, as it scarcely has attention from the society. I remember that you're an internet broadcaster, so I was wondering if you can come over. I was thinking that it would be great if we make a live broadcast at this welfare house to report the situation here, to the public in the hopes that I can get everyone's attention and their compassionate help. A live broadcast at a welfare house? Tian Xiaoming's eyes blinked as ecstasy burst inside her heart. The last time she aired a live broadcast on Tang Xiao at the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, her fans and subscribers had soared by a hundred times and, in extension, brought her fame and fortune as well. Some of her fans and some people, however, also believed that Tian Xiaoming's live broadcast had returned to its previous state. Many even appealed and called out, hoping that she could feed the divine doctor, Tang Xiao again. This was definitely an opportunity, a golden opportunity that occurred only once in a thousand years. Tian Xiaomeng took a deep sigh to stabilize her state of mind and feelings before replying, Please wait a while, idol. I'll take my notebook to write the address. Also, I'll go out right away and make sure to arrive there as fast as I can. A few minutes later, she hung up the phone and directly dashed to the study room, turning on her laptop and accessing her live channel. Oh. Strange, the anchor is actually online? Don't tell me the scheduled time for the live broadcast has changed? Goddess Meng Meng goes online. Meng Meng fans. Where the heck are you all? Could it be there's a new topic now? 
The last time Goddess Meng Meng aired a live broadcast all of a sudden was the live show of that divine doctor, Tang Xiao. Is there any thrilling surprise now? Tian Xiaomeng took a deep breath while looking at the countless messages that kept coming and the online subscribers, that numbered to tens of thousands. Then, she began to speak, Hello, my dear fans and subscribers. Many of Ming Ming's fans are asking whether there will be a great surprise today, given that I came online on my live channel all of a sudden today, and also, many ask as to, will there be any hot news today? All right, everyone. Meng Meng will tell you now. You all guessed it right. Just a few minutes ago, I received a call from the young divine doctor of Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, Tang Xiao. As for the details of the matter divine doctor Tang asked me to do, well, I'll keep you wondering for now. But I hope that you, as Ming Ming's fans, will notice the others timely when I arrive there. I believe that you will be able to see the divine Dr. Tang again, and maybe. There will also some other surprises for you. Anyhow, I'm off for now. See you all later, ciao. Tian Xiaomeng then saw messages coming from innumerable subscribes one after another, shouting excited and looking forward to emojis, making her nice and great inside. After logging out, she immediately packed her stuff and rushed outside at Blue Star Welfare House. After sending the address and the name to Tian Xiaoming, Tang Xiao went to the second floor of the small building and headed to the dean's room. Dean Wu herself didn't have an exact room assigned as her office, since the layout of the building was rudimentary and only had a few rooms. Yet, though there were a lot of things in the entire house, all of them were neatly placed. When Tang Xiao explained that he had invited an internet broadcaster to air a live report, Regarding the situation of the Blue Star Welfare House, even though Dean Wu didn't know much about the job of a live broadcaster, she was, nonetheless, still very excited to be able to publicize the Welfare House, since it meant that many groups in society would learn about them. 12.30 at noon Tang Xiao and Long Xueyao followed Dean Wu to bring the dishes to the table. More than 30 children who hadn't yet changed their newly down jackets had gathered in a large room and sat in front of the long table, with a bowl and chopsticks in front of them. Their eyes were full of anticipation and longing as they looked at the meals prepped by Dean Wu, Tang Xiao, Long Xueyao, and the other two staff. Ring, ring, ring. Tang Xiao's mobile phone rang. After seeing that it was a call from Tian Xiaomeng, he directly went to the hall on the first floor. At the entrance to the Blue Star Welfare House, Tian Xiaoming ended the call and directly logged in into her live channel with her phone. Just as she appeared on her live broadcast channel and looked at the number of viewers displayed there, her eyes stared wide and turned saucer. 760,000 760,000 people were waiting for her in the live broadcast channel, and the number was still increasing? However, when she glanced at the gifts rewarded by the fans, she almost screamed inside and her heart crazily thumped, scared despite having experienced the previous live broadcast at the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital. I. I'm not dreaming, am I? Chapter 610 Heartfelt Throbbing Moments Tian Xiaomeng's shocked expression looked somewhat silly and yet cute, causing her viewers to immediately drool. The comment section also produced innumerable tweets commenting on her expression, all of which said that they had been captivated by her cute, adorable expression. Tian Xiaomeng rubbed her eyes. Just as she was about to speak, she suddenly found that the number of the audience changed. It was around 761,000 a moment ago, but now the number unexpectedly blasted up to 770,000. I. This scared the hell out of me, to be honest. She collected herself and spoke with a moved expression. Immediately after, she pointed the camera at the entrance of the Blue Star Welfare House and aimed it at the signboard at the entrance for a few seconds. Following that, she aimed the camera to herself and said, Ming Ming's fans and subscribers, regardless if you just became one, Meng Meng wants to tell you all that the live broadcast will be broadcasted here. This place is a welfare house located at the suburbs of Star City. 
I only learned about this place after Divine Dr. Tang Xiao told me, else I wouldn't have known that Star City had such a, a welfare house for children. You can see that it looks very dilapidated and very old. And now, please follow Meng Meng as I have a look and see Tang Xiao as well as the children of this welfare house. After saying that, she attempted to capture all the surrounding environment as much as possible while keeping her pace forward. She stopped in front of the small building for a few seconds and then walked toward the fourth door to the east. After pushing open the door and seeing the situation inside, she immediately stopped. Hi everyone, I'm Tian Xiaoming. The first person her vision fell onto was Tang Xiao. She waved at him before coming over and saying, Hello, Divine Dr. Tang. At the moment, Tang Xiao was giving steamed buns to the children. After hearing her voice, he let out a faint smile and gently nodded at her. Following which, he looked at the mobile phone in her hand and smilingly asked, Are you airing the broadcast now? Um, yes. Tian Xiaomeng gently nodded. Tang Xiao smiled at the camera and said, Hello everyone, I'm Tang Xiao. Firstly, I wanna say that I didn't get in touch with Tian Xiaomeng today on my own initiative. But, from the previous exchange and the help obtained by Star City Chinese Medical Hospital after the live broadcast she aired last time, then I thought to call her over. So, I would like to convey my gratitude to Tian Xiaomeng for being able to come here. As a matter of fact, I invited her here for one purpose only. I hope to see more people pay attention to the Blue Star Welfare House and show their care to the children here. And similarly, I hope that everyone is also able to show their compassion and pay attention not only to the Blue Star Welfare House. There still are many welfare houses whose condition is bad all over the country, along with more pitiful children who need our help. The ability I have as an individual is limited. So I hope everyone will also come forward to pour out your compassion and love to care and help them. On the behalf of these children, I thank you all. After saying that, Tang Xiao's gaze left the camera and then nodded to Tian Xiaoming. Following that, he continued to give the steamed buns to the children. With her vision following Tang Xiao, Tian Xiaoming's eyes then shifted after he turned around to the children in the dilapidated room who had already started their meal. Their meal was simple, containing only boiled cabbage and vermicelli cooked in one pot and some meat dumplings. There was nothing else but plain rice congee inside their bowls, which had many notches here and there, and yet the children ate the hot steamed bun given to them greedily as if it was the most delicious food in the world. Tian Xiaoming's gaze then fell on Long Xueyo at the side and asked with a complex expression, Big sis, they only have this one dish? Long Xueyao was perfectly aware of Tang Xiao's goal for doing all these and was grateful to him. When she heard Tian Xiaoming's inquiry, she didn't face her phone cam but nodded silently, before letting out a bitter smile and saying, It's great that you came today, since the cooked meal could be said to be better than usual with some meat in the dish. Usually, these children are only able to have meat in their dish in a two or three days interval. Tian Xiaoming was taken aback. Her family's condition was average, yet they had at least one out of three meals a day with meat in their dishes. But these children could only have a meal with meat in two or three days, whereas they were precisely at their growth spurt. Her vision fell onto the dish and she attempted to find the largest piece of pork meat. She ended up disappointed since the largest piece of meat she could find was only a thin, two thumbs wide piece. On the live channel, the number of viewers now had exceeded 810,000. The comments that kept rolling on in the commentary section previously stopped at this time. No one posted any comment for a long time. Everyone's eyes were glued to the scene of the children wolfing down their meal. The more they followed and watched, the more they showed concern, as even tears broke out in their eyes. Pity and a sour feeling filled their hearts and in particular, there was also a depressing feeling which especially made them uncomfortable, feeling at a loss and stumped, unable to say anything. It was not just their meals. It was more than that since they could clearly see the tattered cotton wadded jackets these children wore. Many had stitches and patches on and they could even see cotton pad exposed on the shoulder of a small boy. 
What was the most unsettling scene for them was that the oldest among these children seemed to be in their teens, whereas the youngest was placed in a small stroller nearby. There was a clear sign of frostbite on her thin, small face, whereas some other children had frostbites on the back of their hands along with traces of blood stains. Tian Xiaomeng was silent for a very long period of time. Only when Tang Xiao came toward her did she finally spoke to the camera, all Meng Ming's viewers. Meng Meng is really wanting to cry at this moment, but I fear that it will be shameful and awkward to cry out in front of these children. Meng Meng is so sad, it's really heartrending seeing these pitiable children. A few seconds later, the comments in the commentary section began to roll down crazily as countless people wrote their moods, feelings, and were itching to do something. Even various gifts and rewards began to flood the live broadcast screen, nearly blocking Tian Xiaomeng's face. Tian Xiaomeng lifted her head and waited for the tears in her eyes to slowly recede. She then lowered her head and solemnly said, From today on until 12 a.m. of the 30th, by the end of this year, all the gifts and rewards gifted by Meng's viewers and all the money will be donated to the Blue Star Welfare House. Meng Meng will also donate 100,000 yuan from my own savings, which I hope is enough to buy more meat and clothes for these children. Meng Meng only hopes that these children can have a warm and happy new year. Beijing, in a certain office building where Star Live Entertainment Media Limited was headquartered. At this moment, the chairman of the board, Wei Qing, was among the viewers watching Tian Xiaoming's live broadcast. His face was a bit pale, and his slightly plump body was somewhat trembling, while clear tears glittered in the sockets of his eyes. Snap. He lit up a cigarette while he raised his head and looked up at the ceiling, trying not to let the tears fall down. Those children in the Blue Star Welfare House brought back memories of his past. He was also an orphan and lived in an orphanage in a small city in the northwest region, where he spent his early life from 5 to 12 years old. Life and living conditions back then was arduous and difficult. He recalled a longing to have some meat in his meal in the past, memories which made his eyes turn red. After he was adopted by his adoptive parents and by the time he graduated from college at the age of 22, he had never returned to that small town neither did he visit that orphanage again. He recalled that after he turned 22 and graduated from college, he received his first month salary from his job and half of the money was sent by mail to that orphanage. He also sent the orphanage some money in the next few years, but never sent even a dime after the dean of the orphanage passed away due to illness. If it wasn't for this live broadcast, he knew that he really would have forgotten the orphanage he had once lived in, and forgotten the hard and difficult living conditions there. I gotta go to the live broadcast room. Wei Ching suddenly got up and strode toward the live broadcast room. After seeing more than a dozen employees busy at work inside, he immediately spoke in a heavy voice, split Tian Mingming's live broadcast screen into two. I need to call and speak to her in person. The few staff exchanged puzzled looks but still executed Wei Qing's order. At Blue Star Welfare House. Seeing the rewards that kept coming in her live broadcast, Tian Mingming felt warm inside. This sort of good deed made her feel proud and fulfilled. At the same time, she also felt grateful to Tang Xiao. No matter if it was the number of her subscribers that already surpassed 1 million at the moment or the gifts and rewards bestowed by her viewers, it really touched and moved her. Um, Tian Xiaomeng's expression suddenly moved as saw that the window of her live broadcast screen was divided into two halves and a slightly plump face then appeared on the other half of the screen. Meng Meng, I apologize for disturbing your live broadcast. I'm the chairman of the Star Live Entertainment Media Limited, Wei Qing, Wei Qing's attitude was very amiable, and inexplicable emotions were still on his face. Tian Xiaomeng was stunned. Her live broadcast platform was under the Star Live Entertainment Media Limited. So to say, this middle-aged man who appeared all of a sudden was her big boss? Why you are? Hello? Tian Xiaomeng stutteringly replied. I've been watching your live broadcast, and to be honest, 
Your live broadcast is the only one that deeply moved and touched my heart ever since I established the Star Live Broadcast platform. I'm also very grateful to you for making me retrospect on myself, reminding me of something I have forgotten as time passed by, finally returning to my former self. Actually, I'm also an orphan. I grew up in an orphanage when I was a child. I still remember. The story narrated by Wei Ching was very slow yet very clear. After having narrating his past in the orphanage, he finally concluded with a bitter expression, I really regret it. I really regret not going back and having a look at the orphanage even once all these years. Even though the dean who had cared for me had already passed away due to sickness, the uncles and aunts over there were also very caring toward me and also those brothers and sisters who lived with me in the orphanage I grew up with. Today, I suddenly realized that I really don't have even a shred of conscience for forgetting about them after I became rich and gained some power. I don't want to apologize for what I've done, however. What I want to do is to make up for it. Meng Meng, please convey my thanks to Divine Dr. Tang. After speaking with you, I'll immediately return to that small town to visit the orphanage I used to live before of which I don't know its condition at present. Let the deeds I will do make up for my mistakes. I want to make it so that other children will to never have to experience being unable to eat until their bellies full and having no clothes, to keep their bodies warm. Like what I have gone through in the past. Tang Xiao had been standing quietly beside Tian Xiaomeng while watching Wei Qing in the live broadcast room, and listening to everything he said from deep within his heart all of which created an inexplicable emotion to surge up inside his heart. It's a very warm and genial feeling.